Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a Q&A session, which is held in uh, the framework of the echoes of the Yehlava Film Festival. Normally, we would be sitting everyone together in a cinema hall with about six or 700 uh, viewers who would certainly all be thrilled after watching uh, The Cockroach by Ai Weiwei. This is not possible in the pandemic times, but we decided not to wait until we can finally go back in person to cinema halls. So just as with the autumn edition, this spring edition of our film festival will be also held online. I believe that you've probably already seen uh, the film yourself, or you can see it after this discussion, because it indeed is a thrilling and very strong experience with an urgent uh, message. To our faithful viewers, this topic is not new. Uh, over the last 10 years, we've been screening uh, the films about Hong Kong. In 2014, we invited one of the supporters of uh, the movement Occupy Joseph Cheng. Then we also organized a discussion about a film by Ai Weiwei, who's now present, who back then was under home arrest. And the topic is uh, even growing in importance, which is also asserted by the film Cockroach, which certainly must have impressed you just as impressed me. Uh, Mr. Aiwaiwei, I must say that this was really a strong experience for me. So the first question is about the, the story behind the film. Why did you decide to shoot this film? Why did you decide to prepare it? Okay. So, could you begin with uh, telling us about the story behind why did you choose this topic? Um, well, we have uh, made, uh, you know, several films, but uh, which one you refers to? Which films you refers to? The, uh, I'm talking about the cockroach, the most okay. recent about okay. Hong Kong protests. Cockroach, because uh, it's very confusing. Because um, then last year we made three films, and the cockroach is a film about Hong Kong. And uh, you know, we from very beginning we start to be involved, and we have our studio people working in Hong Kong day and night. Uh, sometimes 24 hours a day or even uh, over, you know, could be 48 hours on street. And we also hired a local uh, journalist uh, who, who is a cinema photographer for different uh, media also joined our team. And, uh, you know, we, we are deeply impressed. I'm deeply impressed by Hong Kong's uh, movement and it's, uh, it's very unique. And uh, young people and uh, citizens went to the street, uh, clearly uh, just uh, asking for uh, freedom and also to protect democracy. So I decided to make this film. And, uh, you know, the whole making period is about uh, one year, include editing. And uh, it's finished by uh, middle of the of last year. At the same time we finished uh, the film um, Coronation. Thank you. To our viewers, I would like to say that anyone can ask any question in our chat in, on YouTube or anywhere else, and then I will happily ask the question. 
Now let us talk Ai Weiwei about the filming of Cockroach. You couldn't be present, present in Hong Kong and in China, so you were coordinating everything remotely. How did it work? Um, I could uh, see that there were three uh, camera directors. How did the communication work? Well, uh, three, among the three film directors, two of uh, them is my studio film direct, uh, you know, uh, cinema directors. We have been working together for years. And uh, another one is uh, newly joined. So they all have different tasks. And daily, I would uh, see what they have been shooting. I asked them to send me the clips daily. And I gave, would give the instruction about uh, uh, you know what we need, who to interview, and uh, what is the question, and uh, in uh, and uh, where to cover. So with today's technology, uh, this is uh, is I wouldn't say easy, but it's possible because we use uh, the the uh, telegr uh, telegram, you know, the the internet site where the all the Hong Kong uh, activists are using the same. Uh, site, so we know exactly what is happening in where and what will happen. You know, is everything posted? So of course, this is a new condition of the filmmaking, and uh, all, you know, the information you can just get from the internet. The film captures some dramatic scenes of direct clashes between the protesters and police. So I imagine that it must have been very difficult for your filmmakers to be, and yourself, to be so close and not to be able to help at the same time. So what were your feelings when you were shooting thousands of kilometers far away from those injustices that you can hear day to day? Well, um, when we do film, we are totally involved. We, we will get as close as uh, the one uh, fight or being victimized. We, show, we have to show our uh, feelings, but at the same time hide our feelings to be so-called uh, uh, objective. You know, so it's very, uh, it's, uh, it's clearly uh, a struggle and uh, it's very difficult, but um, because our people are, they all, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, have sympathy with the, the, the fighter in, in Hong Kong. So they are not just uh, facing the uh, physical threat, or uh, but also uh, day and nights, and uh, also have to be different locations running and here and there. So it's extremely difficult uh, uh, period of time. So those camera directors weren't protesting themselves. Is that right? They were independent observers of the situations? They are not uh, demonstrators. We, we, we are very clearly, uh, you know, to, to maintain ourselves to be cool because uh, you don't know how long this uh, story will develop. You know, we don't want anybody to get hurt. Of course, we don't also don't want to be uh, look suspicious for the authority can really arrest the world, you know, any of us. In the film, there are also policemen who show the other side of the whole story. Was it difficult to attract them to gain their Trust? Was it important for you to make their voice heard? It is very important to uh, hear the opposition. You know, we're not uh, just a film, uh, you know, by or just on one side. We always want to hear the argument, but it's extremely too difficult to set up some kind of interview. But uh, fortunately, with, with uh, the, the great effort uh, or 
cinema photographer made because we have a lot of local uh, spoken person who try to help us, you know, it's a, it's a big team. So finally, we, 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 we get hold of two of the police uh, people to tell their feelings. How was it for you to see the whole situation? Because probably you perceive it as unjust. You were also listening to uh, the opinions of policemen. You yourself were in clashes with police and gone through uh, disagreeable situations. If it was for yourself or when shooting other films, so how was it for you this contact with police? Well, I have a long, long uh, history in contact with the police. I was beaten. I was uh, uh, arrested and was being detained many times. So, but gradually, you know, made me understand they also human being. They just have the job and they are doing the work. They try to do the work professionally. So I, you know, I think uh, in that case, we have to communicate. We have to, you know, to, 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 to understand the, the other point of view. So that's why I, I always think uh, we all victimized by, by the system. You know, the system is, uh, has no emotions and no humanity. But as individual, every one of us uh, uh, share certain ideas and uh, or about right or wrong. And uh, I think uh, that's my feeling. We have uh, the first question from the audience. Do you think that the film on itself can change something? Can films really make a difference? Well, uh, it can. It made difference on me, uh, make me understand what is really happening. And uh, it made a, a, a great argument for people who watch it to understand what a fight is, uh, is uh, can be and how sad that can be. And also how impossible this kind of fight uh, can, can, can be, you know, doesn't matter. One million people be on the street or you can do it all the time, but also authority is not gonna to listen to you. And, uh, you know, this is a very, very uh, depressing and very difficult. They just don't listen to you. But even though you think it's meaningful to go and record those situations through film? Oh, yeah, I think the film is very important because it, uh, it, it documents so-called the truth. I leave uh, uh, some images uh, for people to share and for history to, to understand what really is happening. We saw the, a very good documentary uh, very easily, people would forget what really happened. You know, uh, the documentary is very visual and very clearly, and uh, you can easily to see from their face, their eyes, what kind of uh, situation they are in. So, uh, for me, uh, my documentary is not just trying to get people to watch, but also uh, for myself, it's my, it's it's my, my daily activity, trying to explore in the areas I don't really understand. And uh, I, I have to get into that kind of degree to understand, uh, you know, uh, to make a judgment. When you say that the films change yourselves, you mentioned the uh, three films that you made uh, during the last year, uh, Coronation as well as Vivos uh, were screened in the Czech Republic. So we saw all of them. How did they change you, these three films in particular? Well, also actually, Coronation. Yeah, and I, I also have to mention there's a fourth film 
we finished at the same time called the Rohan Yas. We never really uh, put on the, uh, you know, in the public. So we still hold that one because we have too many. We made four films in one year, four feature lens films. And uh, so Rohan Yas is about a Myanmar uh, refugee in Bangladesh. It's a very beautiful film. And uh, those films gave me a, a better perspective about the world, you know, about uh, our time, about uh, uh, freedom of speech, human rights, and uh, about the different uh, response in global po uh, global politics. And uh, so it, it, it just teach me so much. Mm. The film from Myanmar that you mentioned is a new film which is also made remotely? Uh, no, I, that film I was in, in the camp and uh, I visited both Myanmar and Bangladesh. And uh, this is three film, or these four films, the Myanmar film and uh, the Vivos, I, I was on site and a uh, film with uh, the teams partially and uh, some of works I let them uh, down independently. Film uh, Vivos is very well done. We screened it and we also awarded a prize at our film festival. Could you compare uh, in general or tell us what are the challenges of uh, directing films remotely? even though you have those technologies and you know very, very well your team, but still the work is very different for coronation, for instance, or the Hong Kong protests. It might have been extremely challenging to shoot uh, those films. So for you, what are really the biggest challenges, problems and struggles? I think the biggest challenge is to try and to make the whole team and doesn't matter a cinema photographer or or a local producer or translator, you know, or, or whoever and get involved deeply understanding and share your vision. You know, they have to uh, understand uh, what kind of camera angle, what kind of uh, long shot, what kind of close range, and what kind of camera movement you know, how, how, how intimate it can go and how indifferent the, some, some uh, screen will go and also with strong shots. Uh, basically, every frame, every taking has to be designed, but of course they have to take a lot more because, uh, you know, with today's camera, you can easily achieve that. You know, you have to leave the cameras on all the time. But also some of the films uh, taking, like the cockroach can be dangerous. So you're worried about their safety and uh, how they can get arrested and how they can quickly respond, jump into a situation, uh, not to, you know, to, to neglect uh, certain happening because during this long shooting period, could be six months or so, very easily people get tired or get injured. So you know, sometimes a bullet, uh, you know, rubber a bullet can, can hit them, but uh, also their, their equipment can be broken. You know, but all those things, but for me it's easy because I'm a good communicator. And, uh, and also I always have a team which uh, have, we have complete trust and we really much depend on each other. So that that is a, a quality of a, a good uh, good team. I agree. It is really surprising how strongly visual materials you or your photographers, the camera directors, um, manage to secure. Um, the last uh, film I could mention about uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, which was also um, directed remotely, was interesting in the fact that the director explained that was guiding uh, his uh, director to have the precise 
footages as he wishes. So for you, really, I think it is uh, uh, ad admirable that you manage. I have another question um, about cockroach. We can see that uh, policemen have um, some sort of immunity because they clothes were highlighted with special colors. So was it an official measure to protect policemen? And did the official government also want journalists to see the scenes in Hong Kong? Um, can you repeat your question? <clears throat> What is the position of the journalists in those conflict situations? Journalists were uh, protected, their clothes were uh, marked with words press, so they were they wanted or unwanted? Oh, of course, uh, you know, the journalist has to be clear, clearly identified, so the police will not uh, uh, mis mistakenly or intentionally to 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 crash on them. And does police respect it, even in those tense situations? Are they really the, protected? Yeah, I think Hong Kong police, uh, even you can say, is uh, with. Uh, a degree of violence, but still they're uh, pretty much controlled with uh, the not so much shooting like what happens in Myanmar by these militaries. And also, you know, you, so uh, still uh, uh, with a uh, restricted uh, manner, but uh, still uh, the, the, the beating uh, caused a lot of uh, injuries and also there's people disappearing uh, during the demonstration. In the book called China Talks, written by Jerome Sanz with Chinese artists, you also participated and you talked about how you left China for the first time for the US. And then 10 years later, you came back to China and you said that the country was completely different, that you left a communist totalitarian state. And 12 years after, you rediscovered a capitalist China. You said that you had been surprised by the incredible progress made by China. How would you describe China today? I think that China made a dramatic uh, progress uh, in terms of its uh, economy and uh, pe people's uh, living standard. But the China, something never changed. It's a still a uh, state capitalism, which is a very high uh, control with the communist uh, ideology. Uh, which may, they may not really believe it, but uh, the method of control is uh, authoritarian and uh, with uh, oppressing its own people. Uh, no freedom of speech, no independent judicial system, no free media, and uh, this one party system. But even within the party, they don't have, a, you know, they don't have a democracy. You know, it, not, not, everything is uh, is uh, totally authoritarian, um, authoritarian capitalism. Mm -hmm. uh, jak podle vás o Číně referují západní média? How is China described by the Western media? What's your take on uh, re reports made by Western media about China? be it in written or online press? I think the, in general, Western media uh, has uh, no clear uh, understanding what uh, they are dealing, you know, for at least for past uh, a few decades. They're intentionally or, or unwillingly just present uh, some kind of uh, superficial image about China. And uh, th therefore, they, they couldn't understand what kind of, uh, you know, obs uh, obsession 
or or uh, you know who they are play with. So I give a chance for China to growing so fast in every aspect. So basically, I think the the Western media are, are very superficial and uh, and there is no deeper understanding about China. I think that this is a huge strength of your films because they do not portray China black and white. They do show us really the living perspective of individual individuals and their stories. I think this is really great. When you talk about this superficial view of the Western media, can you be more specific? Can you give us some concrete examples of those superficial judgments that are made, but that are really, really badly read? Well, um, there's uh, a few clear, uh, um, how do I say, clear assumptions on at the you know, the previous, uh, let, let, let's talk about the uh, uh, US and, uh, and the England, because I don't know the media in Ch Czech Republic, but, uh, you know, the, 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 I only know the English press or German press. So they have a general, uh, general idea about if China uh, become rich, and uh, if there's a middle class, then China will become a democratic society, you know, or have more freedom, which is totally wrong. You know, they, that, that only shows they don't understand China. You know, it's, it's always authoritarian uh, from the, you know, for thousand years, you know, they, they just don't have this tradition of being democratic. And it's not possible for them to accept the idea of being democratic. This cannot have a possibility to have a freedom of speech. So that is one of the uh, very large uh, West media's mistake. They also recently start to uh, regret or realize that is, uh, you know, that idea dominates the West uh, for very long only give West an uh, excuse to, to hook up with this uh, very crude uh, state, but uh, to, to, make, to be benefit, to make profit from China, to make a profit from an authoritarian state, which is very normal for the West because they always been uh, connected to, to bad government, to undemocratic, uh, uh, you know, uh, authorities and to, to be benefited by, by this. And then the second one is just to um, uh, paint China as a evil. Uh, Sorry to interrupt, but could you tell us how can we not support China today? Because anything we hear, we see around us, almost anything virtually was made in China, Chinese um, goods is omnipresent, Chinese money too. Uh, in sports, for example, many British uh, clubs are financed by Chinese governments, but also a famous Prague club today is funded uh, by China. So how can we in our everyday life fight for democracy and democratic influences uh, that could be brought into China or how can we other, otherwise fight against well, China? Well, uh, if you want a simple color uh, answer, you cannot fight with China. It's not possible because uh, the West the world is designed for, for comfort and for laziness, for for living at the other people's difficulty life, and there's no belief in humanity and the freedom for all, you know. So this is such a selfish uh, Western society, you will just, uh, um, you know, business will be normal, just, you know, just, and under China understand very well. So they are much strategically uh, planned and uh, they will become even stronger. Hmm. 
Tedy ani vy sám uh, nemáte... So, not even yourself have a specific tool or uh, instrument on how to avoid at least a little bit the Chinese influence. How do you solve it yourself personally? Personally, I, I, I was born as a fighter. You know, I was born as a dissident. I'm lucky to have that uh, uh, genes in my blood. So I never, you know, I would never worry about myself. I got by and I will keep fighting. We have uh, one more question by an audi audience viewer who says that uh, cockroach or coronation, sorry, was not uh, screened at uh, large scale festivals. Is that right? And do you think that this is the same fate for cockroach? Because cockroach is, uh, was, has not been presented at many, many uh, big festivals too. Uh, and do you, th do you think that the reason is uh, the fear of antagonizing China or why is that? So? Yeah, yeah. I, I give you a simple, uh, yeah. simple description. All our films have go through the festivals. We first, we always finish the first, show them the first. They always feel so surprised and deeply impressed, you know, by the selector team. And the final words come out is no, no explanation. But I don't understand the system very well. The, the ma majority of the buyer, the market is the Chinese market, is buyer's market. Any festival, they still can become a festival as they, they are willing to sell, uh, sell the films. And every director, every actor, actress, they just producers, they want to sell their films because the film industry is a big machine. And uh, so if they cannot afford to lose China. China is already become a number one uh, market over past the US. US used to be number one, now it's China. And the China theater uh, already opened for months, you know, <laughs> during the whole lockdown of the West. And, uh, you know, nobody can afford to have a film which is independent critical or, or show some uh, or raise fingers to China. It's just not possible. You know, it's a business after all. That's why I think the West will lose the whole fighting battle because no one, uh, no any company uh, would defend the values. They all profit making companies selfish, uh, short-sighted, and uh, they would sell any values to authoritarian for money. Could you name some of the festivals that well, uh, refused your Well, the festivals, films? Uh, because it's in autumn, you know, we, we finished in the summer, so we send the first to Venice, then we send to Toronto, then we send to New York uh, Film Festival, we give to also give to you know the uh, how do you call Sundance, you know Sundance accepted the labels uh, uh, of last year at the beginning, but this time we also give to Sundance, and uh, we also give to Netflix online, and uh, Amazon. They all loved it. First, they don't believe it. They think this is so exciting. You know the people who doesn't make a decision. They're so passionate. They said, oh my God, this is not possible. You know, you're presenting a film about China, about Wuhan, about, uh, you know, this pandemic. Nobody ever done that. And they, now you talk about Hong Kong and they, this is probably the most uh, uh, comprehensive film. But uh, later the words is no. So that's why it pushes us to just put on the Vimeo, you know, a few people watch it. This is a reality and uh, it's okay. Mm 
když popisujete tuto pozici... Also, I, I forgot to mention Berlin Film Festival. It's a film festival always talking about they're making political films for being famous, but every time they are being refused. I would also like to ask whether these films can be screened or somehow watched in China via internet somehow? Is it possible? No, in internet uh, completely shut down in China. And uh, YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, you know, Instagram, everything's shut down, even Clubhouse. And, uh, and uh, you know, the one gallery with uh, about 100 friends privately want to show it in the gallery and with no announcement. After 15 minutes, the police comes in to say, hey, shut off, you know, get out of here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's really different to society. It's very, very different. And, uh, you know, even, yeah, it's... Vaše, it's uh... You seem to be really natural in your position of fighter. I think it was it is mainly due to uh, your family background because your father was sent into exile and you were born separated. Uh, you couldn't go back to Beijing until your age of 18. Your father had to work in very low skills positions. He couldn't be a public figure and um, enhance his poetic career, which changed uh, if I'm not mistaken. But I think that this whole experience must have been incredibly um, influensive living in the margins of society from the very beginning of your life. So can you maybe reflect on, um, upon this time of your life a bit? Uh, uh, it's a story I repeat a song in time. It's my father studied in Paris in the 30s uh, and a very good artist and a poet and they become a re revolutionary and the same generation as the President Xi's father. They are very close friends in Yan'an. And he are friends with Chairman Mao or Zhou Enlai, you know, that generation. And he is the leading, the most patriotic uh, poet in China. And also today, uh, all the school kids have to study from, you know, from kindergarten to universities about his poetry. But he, during his life, 20 year, 21 years, he was exiled by communists. And uh, I was growing up with him. He's uh, cleaned the, you know, the, the, the really, really primitive toilet in, the, in a village, you know, we live the underground, you know. So I was born as a dissident. I understand what it means to be enemy of the state. So, uh, you know, all those things, I, I, it, but uh, it doesn't affect me till myself become an activist. You know, that's many, many years later. You know, I, I have equipped myself with the understanding of what the U.S. is about. I spent 12 years there and I uh, went back to understand what China is about, you know, after uh, Chairman Mao, but uh, uh, in this capitalism development, the so-called globalization. And it takes a long journey to understand what is going on. And still I'm learning, you know, after 2015, I'm allowed to come to Europe. And by that time, I gradually to understand what Europe is about, you know, what the global human rights condition is about. Our discussion will end shortly. So I have last, the very last question which is about where you as an artist look for beauty because in your work you are uh, faced with uh, all sorts of injustice and um, sadness but beauty is also important so what is beauty for you i think uh, my problem is in my eye beauty is everywhere uh, it's in cup of tea 
it's in the wind, it's in the, uh, you know, in the morning or night. And, you know, when I play with my cats, you know, when I talk to my assistant about our projects, the communication and the possibility and the impossible. Uh, you know, we talk about the, the most fascinating thing is the humanity and, uh, you know, how this, this creature as a human being would, uh, would uh, develop or into something, uh, you know, in the future. So, you know, I am very happy uh, still alive and uh, I enjoy every moment. Thank you very, very much for this very optimistic and encouraging ending note. Thank you for your films. Thank you for your projects, your artistic gestures. Thank you for recording situations that you also go through as a citizens. Good luck and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the festival, for the people who who watching the film and uh, to share some kind of understanding. Thank you.